Mushroom 11 started out as a basic game made in just 48 hours at a game jam. Since then it's been backed by Indie Fund and evolved a lot. Jonathan Blow gives us a demo of this recent build. This is a game called Mushroom 11. The developer is a guy named Ite Karen who lives in New York. What I'm about to show, it's, uh, it's a long way from release, so it's sort of an early glimpse. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have it running on the iPad and on Windows. This is actually a Windows 8 machine. And the, the basic idea of the game is that you control this blob of fungus-like material that likes to regrow itself. And my only control that I have is by using the mouse, I can destroy parts of the fungus and it'll regrow in other directions. And I move him that way. So I can sort of eat parts behind the fungus and it'll roll. And um, I can also control with touch. So I'm, I'm going to use mouse for most of this so that people can see. but. You know, also on machines that have touch controls, I can just sort of reach out and this is how you would play it on an iPad. You see you're in a post-apocalyptic world and you can roll around and eat strange organisms. Um, here there's a little switch in the ground that as long as I'm holding that down, you know, it controls this platform. So I, I need to get on the platform without releasing the switch, which there are sort of several ways to do that, but a simple way is just to try to stretch myself out. Oh, 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 I didn't do it. The little destruction uh, ability that I have is analog. Like if I tap just briefly, I only eat a small part of him. And if I hold right, I do a big part. So now that I've got part of me on this platform, I can actually just like kill what's between. And now I've divided myself in two, but then I can just destroy this old part and I'll regrow over there and ride the platform up. Below me there's sort of a pit of lava that I want to avoid. And so this is this game's equivalent of a jumping puzzle, except you can't jump. You just sort of have to navigate yourself one way or the other uh, across these holes. What should I do? OK, I guess I'm going to cut myself again and kill this part. So that's one way you can cross. Another way you can cross is sort of by making an arc, right, that, that just holds at both ends, and then just kind of scooting from the back. And now, as you may see in many platformers, there's this sort of dual moving platform puzzle where you have to time your way across. Um, but it's different suddenly when you can't run and you can't jump, you know? it's it's very different. Oh, and here, this one's really cute. So here, if I get on this block, I'll grow my way into that hole. And then I shift my weight over to the left here, and it, I'm tipping it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with the mouse. I usually play it on touch. Let's see what happens. So I cut at the right time, yeah, and I can fly over across the lava. So the game is um, its just all about creating interesting scenarios like that one after another. So here's another one. In addition to the final part of our Mushroom 11 demo, stick with us here at VG247 for more indie game coverage. Here's a teaser of a selection of videos coming up, starting out with this bombshell about Nintendo. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I think I've seen personally, like firsthand, Nintendo making a big move to try to get more smaller, unique, independent games on Wii U downloadable. Um, and they've got a, like, they have a really great team of people there. Dan Edelman, who, who runs that division, is like one of the raddest dudes in video games and one of the, I would say, like easily one of the most respected people by the independent community. And Nintendo is reaching out and trying to, you know, they're trying to do something. They're playing catch up, obviously, but, and that's a, a hard spot to be in when it comes to like getting the new stuff. But I think they're really putting like something like Little Inferno. Uh, that's that game is very special, and it was a Wii U title first. And yeah. the other thing that we keep hearing, uh, or that we've heard a few times, is people that um, are like, "Oh my God, I, I was I was drawing pictures of this game like years ago too. I, I had the same idea," and that's that's kind of cool. But it's it's not really people are happy that that we're 
Yeah, they're never spiteful or yeah. angry. They're always like, oh, we're really happy. Like, I'm really happy that you guys are making this. Like, this is exactly what I wanted to make. I want to play it. I'm glad you guys are following through. Like, yeah, there's, it's, there's it's, like, it's, there's like a Golden Gear games. Like, they work, yeah, they work yeah, like yeah. across the table from us at our co-working space. And like, when they first saw it, they're just like, you took this out of our brain. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think people don't realize how much trial and error it takes to land on a solid idea. I mean, most people think, oh yeah, this guy, you know, this is his first attempt at making a game and it's a hit. But that's usually not the case. It usually takes many, many tries. You're prototyping different things and some of the ideas that you got from a certain prototype carry over or something you remember from a, an older prototype, you know, you bring, a, you bring back again. That's happened with a lot of our games.